The Lord will never leave you, and He'll never forsake you. Even in the midst of your financial struggles, He will lift you up through it all. Frank Sutton, bass guitarist and vocalist with the Christian country music group, DMB, looks back on his earlier years on the road, the financial difficulties, and the time to call it quits. He too faced many financial challenges during those years, but God was faithful. 25 years later, the band reunited and with a new name, Jackson Heights, and they haven't slowed down yet. This is his story of unshakable faith. This is Today's Nashville. Frank, I am so excited to sit down with you today. Me too. And that you are going to share your amazing journey. And it started when? Uh, growing up. Like a lot of artists come up through the church, mom, dad sang, sister well, well, sang. Were you born here or where were you born? Oh, North Carolina. No, Goldsboro, North Carolina, born and raised. Um, home church, you know, we, the family all sang, made me go to piano lessons. That didn't work out so well. After four years, <laughs> I quit. Dad said, you're going to play something. So took me to the music store. And Ricky Frederick said, well, try lead guitar. That nah, didn't work. Try acoustic guitar. That nah, didn't work. Bass guitar. Yeah, that works. How old were you? Uh, probably early teens, from what I remember. Because I'd started, I'd probably started seven or eight, somewhere around there, taking piano, and so yeah, probably early teens. I don't remember exactly, but the, but the bass guitar was it, and started playing for dad and mom and all, and them at church, playing at church, and then uh, sang with them until you know twelve or thirteen hit, and then that this went away um, for about a year and a half. I lost my voice. And, and so I just kept playing. After it came back, then started singing with them again. Um, now, were they singing in church or going to different churches, or was it just a family? At church, it was family, mostly. It was, it was the four of us. It usually, my sister played piano, I played bass. My dad played acoustic guitar. So that was kind of the music. And, and then all four of us sang okay. in, in different parts. And then... Fast forward to my senior year in high school, I, we played with a, 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 my old buddy Galen, Galen Pope and the Majestics. We played with them somewhere around town, I forget. Um, they needed a bass player. They asked me, I asked dad. He said, okay, as long as you keep your grades up, you can still do it. So my senior year in high school, weekends, I was going out with them and playing weekends. After I graduated, the year, the spring after I graduated, we played with the Dixie Melody Boys at Charles B. Acock High School, if I remember correctly, on a Thursday night. They needed a bass player. Of course, they came and said, hey, you want to try out? And I said, why? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, because we need a bass player. Well, you got one. He's, no, he's leaving. Oh, okay. So I tried out with them, and that was Alan. Um, he was the band leader, and he said, we ran through a couple of songs that I knew, and he said, hey, give me a minute. Went and talked to his dad, who was Ed O'Neill, Dixie Melody Boys. Um, came back and said, okay, job's yours. We're leaving Tuesday if you want to go. And you're 18 years old, or night, uh, high school see. still? I graduated in 79, and, uh, and, and it was the next spring in 80. It was April of 80. So you just decided to go on the road? Yeah, and at the time I was working a job, and I talked to my dad. Well, after Alan talked to his dad, I said, well, let me go talk to my dad. I talked to my dad, and he said, so what do you want to do? I said, yeah, but what about my job? He said, you go in tomorrow morning and tell them. They'll, they'll understand. So I went and told my foreman the next morning, and he said, hey, going to miss you, but I get it. I understand. So Tuesday, loaded up, and whoop, five years of that. On, on the, road. the road for five years. Yeah, that's all we did. 1980 to 85, uh, we were gone typically 300 plus days a year um, on the road. So all over the United States or? Oh, yeah. United States, Canada, 
Um, you know, we, we used to do tours up in Canada. What was it like to be on the road at that young of age? You know, all of us were young except Ed. Ed was the owner of Bass Singer. So he was like our father figure on the road, kept us straight, you know, made sure we... <laughs> Didn't get it. Did, oh, got to ask, did you get into any trouble during... No, any we, did, we did. We did. Did you try? We, we did. No, because we knew better. <laughs> we did stupid stuff, you know, as being mischievous guys, you know, playing pranks on each other was most of what it was. Like, you know, if somebody decided to take a nap in the lounge and they fell asleep in the lounge, you just take a little mustard and, you know, drop it on their tongue and it, <laughs> when they wake up. Just stuff like just that. Just like that. Yes. We just had a blast. We were young guys doing what we wanted to do sharing the music, sharing the message, and enjoying our time. Let, uh, me, let so. me take you back just a little bit. Yeah. When did you decide to become a follower of, of Jesus? Oh, that was uh, 13. At a younger, 13. Um, my family, we were singing at a revival just outside of town. Don't remember the church, but it was just outside of Goldsboro. Uh, one of those nights, he, get, he gave the message and... My brother-in-law, who is now a pastor, was singing bass with, with us, and he went up. Yeah, he went up with me and helped lead me to Christ. Yeah. And so you just brought that right into your five years on the road. Yeah, yeah. Any fun stories you can share about that? Uh, Any memorable stories or? Uh, t tons. Tons of memorable stories. Um, Do you see a lot of people become saved during yes. that time? Yes, and blessed. I mean, I, at that time, our whole thing was we, we want to give entertainment, Christian entertainment, mm -hmm. good entertainment, good singing, good music. We want you to go away feeling better than you came. And yeah, if you don't know Christ, here he is. So what happened after that? Uh, I had gotten married in there, uh, 83, had, had the first child in 84. Why you were on the road? and you... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Met, met her. She came to hear us and, and got married in the first child, um, 84, but he, was, he came early. He was a two-and-a-half-month preemie. Developed hydrocephalus, which is the old waterhead baby. Mm -hmm. They put a shunt in. It malfunctioned. A lot, of, a lot of surgeries, like six or eight before he was six months old, and, and then consequent surgeries and a lot of medical bills. And back then, you know, she had medical coverage, but it was the old 80 20. Well, when you have a million dollar plus baby, you, you do the math, it adds up. So I had to get off the road at the end of 85 and help take care of him and her. And, how did that affect your faith? It was tough. One of the hardest decisions I'd ever made, but I knew at the time I really didn't have a choice. It, it, it had to be done. Hated to leave the band and the guys, but had to take care of him and her. So it, it, was, it, was, it, it was not easy. Um, uh, but, you know, through it all, God was there. Frank, that must have been so difficult for you at a young age, a new wife, a baby yeah. in the hospital, yeah. coming off the road. What did you do after that? It was tough. No, nobody, you know, who, who, who predicts, you know, when you get married, I'm going to have a preemie. <laughs> nobody. You know, I'm going to have a baby. So... The, the, as our, our neonatal surgeon, neo neuro, neonatal surgeon, I think, um, who put his shunt in, took care of him and all that, um, he told us, he sat us down and told us early on, this is going to turn your world upside down. There are going to be a lot of changes you're going to have to make. Mostly you're going to have to learn no. And of course... We were, what? He said, there are going to be a lot of people, well-intentioned, that are going to want to help. But you're not going to have time for it. You're not going to 
be able to do what they ask you to do, the normal routines of life, a lot of those things are going to have to change, at least temporarily for now until we get him stabilized. <laughs> and he was right. I mean, there were a lot of things we had to change about, you know, our, our daily lives, our activity, and so on. Of course, you know, me, me leaving the band and um, having to work, get a job. I, I did sheetrock for, I think, about six months. My, our babysitter's husband, Hung Sheetrock, did that for a little while. Uh, worked with my father-in-law for a little while, buying and selling used, car, used construction equipment. And then uh, later that year, then he helped me get a job with, was going to go to Delta Airlines because he knew the general manager there in Charlotte, but they weren't hiring, except flight attendants. Uh, American was hiring, so he sent me over there and went to work with American because I just needed to work and needed, you know, job income money, so did that and so you had to completely start over from music Ooh. into finding a... Yeah. Yeah, because I had, you know, I knew then I just, I couldn't, I even, <laughs> at some point in time, I can't remember when, I gave my guitar to my cousin, I gave my stuff away, I just had to put it all, I had to leave it all behind, because I had to focus on, you know, taking care of them, and... Uh, what, what feelings were you having at that time? Uh when you had to leave it all behind and start a new chapter? Once, once I was done, it was, there was no time to really think or worry about because we had so much going on with Landon, with him and, and the surgeries and the hospital and everything and the job and the work and the this and, you know, and just surviving and paying bills. There wasn't a lot of time. So I just had to, just had to press forward and move on and, and trust that God would, you know, lay it out and supply. And, you know, as, as time went on, we got land and stabilized. And then four years later, you know, doctor said, okay, well, you know, we think, we think we know, you know, why he was a preemie. And so we had, uh, we decided to have a second child. That was Chance. And she had to be in the hospital on uh, uh, bed rest for the last three months, the last trimester, uh, because she started going into contractions. So... Uh, Chance kept him until a month early, and then that was in 89, and then 91, um, we had our surprise baby, <laughs> Logan. <laughs> I so call him our Disney boys. baby. Yeah, three boys. <laughs> yeah, and and had him and I one same thing. She had to be on bed rest last trimester, so, you know, got through that and so on. And then we got things kind of stable, and uh, as I thought, and so she wanted to come home and be mom, so came home. Um, I, I worked and worked and worked a lot. <laughs> how how was your son, your first son, how was his health at this time? He, he had stabilized, you know, he had the shunt and it, he, he still working. has it, wears it for life. Mm -hmm. It takes care of the fluid and just drains it. But we still had, you know, struggles financially because we're still, you know, you kind of move on, but you, we still had these medical bills behind us that were still following us. It culminated to around 2000, I, I forget the exact time frame, that we were $107,000 in debt, and that did not include the house and the cars. That was just flat out debt. From to the, hospitals and? From hospital, medical, this and that, trying to live, charge this. Did it cause a lot of stress? Woo! <laughs> That's an understatement. But it was just be, because of some circumstance and some stupid decisions that we made. Um, I went and met with a bankruptcy attorney. He said, you got one choice, file chapter seven. It's all white clean. Then went and met with my godfather, who was like my spiritual mentor. Um, I called him Coach. Bill Horton was his name. Um, he said, well, you can do it man's way or you can do it God's way. Man, man's way is filing the bankruptcy. God's way is let me walk you through it, and I'll show you. And that's what we chose. And it turned out that God actually, you know, normally bankruptcy, seven years, ten years, whatever. It turns out that God's way was six years. And I can tell you and walk you through the transactions. What was it like? Six, it, what was the six? What did God teach you in those six years? Every day, and, and Coach told me this, Every day you wake up and say, God, I trust you, and whatever you give me today, 
I'm going to do. And that's what I did. And every day I walked through it, and I was doing real estate and working at the airport at the same time, part-time airport, full-time real estate. And he, along with God, just led me and directed me to where God laid some things out and said, okay, here's a subdivision, here's a land deal, here's some other deals. And to where in six years I was able to close deals, pay off all the debt, restore our credit, and put us back on solid ground. Isn't God amazing? He's, he's, he's awesome. He's such a guy. He's just, he's awesome. And, the, and, and I know it was him because of the guys that were involved and in how that all happened. Because some of them I met, like Coach, I met at Bible study, fellowship. Mike, I met at Bible study, fellowship. And all those things came because, and, and through that. And, and it was just a be- it was beautiful, it's beautiful to reflect on, and it was, it was just wonderful to live through. So Frank, after six years, God restoring your life. Mm-hmm. Pick up from there. Ah, uh, solid ground. You know, had to, you had to get car for the oldest because high school, and then. So they're could, growing up. Your kids are yeah. all growing up at this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and there was a house move somewhere in between because I was running out of bedrooms and bathrooms, so I, <laughs> I had to get more for the boys, and and so she, she would have her own bathroom, but. Uh, college and then one and then the second one high school car college and then the third one high school car college and um and they were they were all awesome they uh they majored they you know through middle school high school they they did musical theater and then first one went musical theater then switched to vocal performance second one uh musical theater and sign interpretation and then flipped the major after the first year, and uh, the major and the minor, and then in sign interpretation, which is what he does now for the deaf, and then third one was acting major, and um, you know, all all did the thing and enjoyed it, and that carried us, you know, through 2011 when I, well, they were off to college, and then I moved to Nashville. Well, let's talk about how God brought you back around, back into music. That was 2012, the year after uh, moved to Nashville. Actually, I was, down, I was down at the beach at a wedding, and I'm getting a phone call and text. I'm like, I don't know who that is. And then finally he texts, and he said, hey, this is McCray Dove, Dove Brothers. I want to talk to you about DMB band reunion. Oh, okay. So I called him back, I said, and I said, McCray, I'm at a wedding at the beach. What's up? So he said, well, I'm putting together this concert, benefit concert, and I wanted to see if you guys would come back together for a reunion of the D&B band, which when, when we were together in the early 80s, you know, we had, we had started out Southern Gospel and then transitioned to Christian country because of personnel changes in the vocals, and we actually started Christian country, which wasn't even a thing then. Uh, and we didn't know what it was then. We just needed different songs because we didn't have... Southern gospel voices. We had country voices. That's kind of what we listened to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, our heroes are Alabama and Oak Ridge and you know, Gatlins and all that. So anyway, we, 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 said, we all said yes, got back together. It, it was like riding a bike. It was like... Uh, Being home. It was. It really was. We all just clicked again. We, we all love hanging out with each other as brothers and brothers in Christ. We just, we love being together. And of course, the, the bonus is we, we get to do our music, which we love. And, and we get to, and then the, the, the extra bonus is we get to share uh, the music that, and the gift he's given us with his message. Because, you know, we, could, we talked about it. We could, at some point, we could probably could have, you know, transition the country and all that, and 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 because we had a full band, and and we actually, in our day, we were one of the few groups that had a full band, and but we said, you know what, we we like our stuff, we like our, and we want everybody to know what we know. Well, you had a new season yeah. and a new name, Jackson Heights. Jackson Heights, and that came from um, 
So you're yeah. no longer the old band. No. You're the new band. No. When we got back together, Ed's dad, Dix and Melody Boys, they were still on the road, so it was kind of confusing with us, Dix and Melody Boys, D&B band. So we said, well, let's just, you know, we're back together, let's, let's do a name change. And the guys, you know, um, there was this little community uh, near Kinston, North Carolina, where we were based up back in the 80s, uh, called Jackson Heights. And that's where a lot of the guys live when, you know, they came from wherever and, and with the band. So I forget who it was, it was Ken or Alan. One of the guys said, well, what about Jackson Heights? Right. Well, the only other Jackson Heights name was some group in Europe years ago. And then what the, the community up in New York. <laughs> so Jackson Heights fit. And, and it worked, and, and that's how what we go by now, which, which is jacksonheightsmusic.com on, online, but it's Jackson Heights, and that is, is our new, we've done one, two, we've done three CDs since we've been back together, new project, where, or, or new uh, music. Kent, our, our lead singer, he writes 90% of our music. So our latest CD was this thing called Life, which is one of the songs on the CD, <laughs> funny as all get out. Never thought in my 30, 40 years I'd be singing about dogs in the trash and kids having a rash, but it's in there. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's hilarious. It's a great song, and the, and the whole thing is good. Um, and we're working on plans right now for two new uh, projects, hopefully, if not out by the end of the year, maybe first of next year. Yeah. What's life like on the road today is sweet because we you know we all we all we try to go out well when we got back together we said well let's do this again next year so we took a week off and did it next year week's kind of tough because everybody's got jobs and 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 lives and stuff so well let's do some weekends so then we started um doing weekends and now we try to do one weekend a month every other month whatever we do we put out the word somebody wants us to come, we'll go. If we can work it all out, we'll go. And so we do weekends now, and, and it's, you, we have no pressure. There's no, we don't have to worry about paying the bills or, or, where, or where's fuel money coming from. It, there's, there's none of that. And it's all sweet because we just get to go out and share, spend time together, and then the blessings are when, for instance, this, we, we sing up at this church in the Northeast, and this guy comes and, and he's, he's just invited to come in because there was just going to be this concert, music. It, it, motorcycle, doesn't, know, ha, doesn't have a clue. He hears the music, it, it appeals to him, he accepts Christ. Frank, you are amazing. I love what God has done in your life. I love your tender heart. You are such a dear friend to us. Taxes, taxes, taxes. There you go. <laughs> thank Got you. Got it back. <laughs> thank, thank you, Frank. Thank you. My Bye. friend, are you facing financial challenges? Like Frank said, are you going to do it man's way or are you going to do it God's way? If you do it God's way, he's going to turn you completely around, transform your life so that you can share your story of unshakable faith that will give him honor and glory. This is Today's Nashville. This is Faith. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.